actual kick off event <laughs> of um, our open meetings for this meeting that we're having between um, the University of Helsinki faculty and us. We have been engaged now for um, maybe eight years in developing an international collaborative science project. Um, this is really a very exciting effort. It was funded by first um, the National Science Foundation and then the Academy of Finland and we're very excited because one of the um, principal people who funds this from the Academy of Finland has joined us here today, this is Litko. So thank you very much for coming and being part of this. Um, and now I'm getting a real opportunity to introduce my colleague, Yari Lavalon. Mm -hmm. I want to say that Yari and I um, met um, at an NSF um, Finland meeting, uh, and um, we didn't know each other. Um, I sat at one table, and he sat at that same table, and we started talking, and before we knew it, we had a friend in common, and more importantly, we had ideas in common. And when you have ideas in common, it really forms a very different kind of sense of, let's work together, let's work this out, and we put together, we think, probably one of the most exciting international studies that has been done um, that actually has a randomized controlled trial, which is not something like PISA and TALIS, although we're very supportive of these other efforts in the IEA, where, where you have a whole group of nation states that sit around and form ideas and questions and negotiate up and back and then do a study for a single year. This is actually a very long, involved process. It has a whole system involved in it. So not only are we testing students, we're actually giving them a treatment. The treatment is curriculum. The treatment is um, assessments and professional learning of teachers. So this is not just a single test item that we've done, but really something to try and understand how we can engage students in learning. So, but the reason that Yari is so key is that he is probably one of the most esteemed international people in teacher education in the world. Um, he has extensive publications. He has worked exclusively on issues related to teacher education. He has served on a number of committees that he's been involved with, the Minister of Education um, in Finland. He has served on OECD um, meetings. He also has an appointment in, um, in South Africa. He is really considered to be the person in science teacher education. And when you talk about who are some of the best people who do research in science teaching and science learning. You always hear Yari Lavalone's name and next to, of course, our very esteemed professor, huh. Joseph Preicha. Yeah. So we are very fortunate to have the two most leading people out here. And it is really with great pleasure, I can't tell you what a lovely colleague Yari has been for me. We have presented together all over the world. We have done uh, papers together, we published together, our, we published our teams together, and it has always been a shared, wonderful, collaborative experience. And Yari, I'm just so happy you're here to be able to give us a seminar today. So with that, would you all please give our colleague and dear friend Yari a applause. Uh. Thank you, Barbara, for, for these very nice words. I, I was not able to recognize myself. Okay, I, I'm very happy if you see my, myself from this kind of eyes. So I will introduce how in Europe, how in Finland, we make progress in education. And collaboration is, is very important when, while we are making progress. So this is not directly linked to the Pia project, because tomorrow we have the whole day 
seminar about buyers. So this is a little bit more general. And of course, my background is in science. So the focus or coming direction is from science education, science teacher education. But I think that it's a little bit general what I am talking now. So I have been leading at the national level this reform program or development program for teacher education. And so this is very much based on my experiences and research in, in this project. So let's hope it's working. It works before. So, okay. okay, what did you guys do? There was a Zoom meeting. Is it Zoom meeting still going on? Before, so. I can, I, can use, I can use that one. Yeah, that's fine. It's fine. Thank you. Okay. So, uh, first, education is context specific. And what I am now analyzing here about teacher education in our context. I hope it is interesting, but what's working in my context that might be not working in your context. And actually, the OECD the organization is emphasizing that it's maybe better to focus to the processes, how, how people are, how, how countries are making progress, not exactly how is something organized. So I hope that you can focus to the processes I am introducing and not so detailed how we, how we are doing things. And, and, and of course, we, it's, it's, I think we share the idea that we need competent people in all levels of education, in teacher education, in school education. We should have support to the continuous professional learning for teachers, but also for teacher educators. Shared understanding where to go and how to go and, and also open dialogue. So, I am still confused with this. Where is the, we can make the present. Now it's working. Okay. Here. Okay. So my country, it's uh, about half of the population you have in Michigan, but the landscape, it's a little bigger one. So it's a quite big country with few people. We have foreign born people, 2%, you have 7 We have common compulsory education. That is very common in northern, northern part of Europe that we are in Finland, Sweden, Norway. We have a common compulsory education. No private schools, no private education. Our industry is focusing to electronics and the game industry is raising area. There are many games. Earlier, the Angry Birds were one example, but there are Supercell and many companies in Finland who are producing games. Metal and forest industry are also important. So this is a nutshell, Finland. So we are located, Michigan and Finland, in the northern part of the globe, but we are a little bit more north than you. So on the other hand, the landscape is quite similar. So I, I feel like like a home, because we have uh, warm water is coming from the Caribbean, so that's make it more pleasant to live in Finland. Otherwise, it's like, like in the very northern part of Canada. Our context, so we are emphasizing kind of collaboration in education. We always ask what is our vision, but while we are making the national curriculum, we are not having standards, we have a curriculum. While we are making that, we are looking in consensus, the big ideas. What, we, what is the orientation in education? Long-term vision is, is common. So in the 60s was decided the most important things. That time it was decided that we should have this common compulsory education and teacher education should be organized in traditional universities. So during the last 40 years, we have had master level education for primary and secondary teachers. And secondary teachers were actually educated much more earlier, more than 100 years old tradition to educate them at traditional universities. So actually the Helsinki University and Michigan State University are somehow similar. We have 
11 faculties, medical school and, 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 and law school and, and like that. But we have also faculty of education and, and inside the faculty we have primary and secondary teacher education. O of course the secondary teachers are educated also at the faculty of science or humanities and so on. And, and research is very important. We all know that Michigan is nowadays number one in many rankings in education. We are typically ranked among the best 100 universities. So not bad, but not, not, not similar than the native US English speaking universities. Equity is important. Earlier we were looking equality, but now we are more eager to diagnose what are the difficulties and we are aiming to find solution to each individual problem. So the equity, not exactly the same for everybody, but according to the needs. And also the schools policy is equity based. So if schools have difficulties, they are giving more resources. So that is also in all level of education. Special education is important. All teachers in our university should become familiar with the basics of special education. In Finland, about 20% of the students are recognized to have special needs. So the equity is made in many ways in our education. And quality, we are not having centralized quality control. It's more like a quality culture. And decentralization means that there is a lot of quality work at school and classroom level. We don't have inspectors or we don't have testing. So the teachers are uh, doing the planning and the evaluation of the learning outcomes. So these are the nutshell. So I'm not going to the detail, but just some contrasting, helping you to understand my views to the development of teacher education. So in Finland, always we describe aims as broad aims, not detailed described learning outcomes. And we give space for teachers to make interpretation of the aims. Somehow it's old fashioned way of thinking in education, but on the other hand, if teachers are highly educated, they can make the personal interpretation of the aims. Important level is the classroom level. Many countries, the district is most important because the testing is planned at the district level. Focus on process and products in, in many countries who are following the outcome based thinking, the product is important or most important. There are positive and negative sides in both approaches. In our system, co-planning, teacher conducted planning assessment are important and this makes teacher profession very appreciated and attractive. So Finland is one of the countries that we don't have lack of teachers. We have enough math teachers, science teachers, primary teachers, only kindergarten teachers we have some lack. Our problem is to compare because the classroom based assessment makes the variation. So we have to tolerate that negative side and there are some mechanism how we are looking for comparability. The comparison easier. So, so for example, the descriptive descriptions of the criteria for final assessment and things like that. In outcome based thinking, it's very common in the world. Learner knows exactly, teacher knows exactly what, what he or she should teach, what he or she should learn. But the negative side is competitive school culture and teaching to the test. So that was the context. So I should say something about the context. And then I go to the teacher education practices, how they have been for a long time. And then I, I, I introduce what we were discussing during the last five years when we have been looking for progress and then how it was implemented in teacher education. I, I think that in every country we are looking for good high quality teachers. We are using different terms like professional teacher, effective teacher, competent teacher, and actually the meaning of them are different. Basically we think that we should educate good high quality teachers, but our understanding is not the same. What we are talking about good teachers, it's a difference in, in our talk. And, and there are two, there are many ways how to describe, but there are two kind of dead ends. We are following this input model 
and, and many people are blaming it as an old fashioned. And uh, for example, European Union, we are the member of the union. They are blaming us that we are old fashioned and we are not following the outcome based thinking that is followed by most of the European countries. But still we think that it's working in our context. So we are looking for professional teachers and the input mean that we should educate teachers well. Well enough in the subject knowledge, pedagogical content knowledge, pedagogical knowledge, contextual knowledge, curriculum knowledge, and then give them freedom and, and, and autonomy in the teacher profession. But this input thinking is not working if we are not educating teachers well. And it is not working if the school side and the policy is not giving or allowing teachers to be professional. So there is certain things that politicians and the school district people should remember. And, and the third dimension is the collaboration culture. In output thinking, the output is most important. The effective teacher is understood as a teacher whose students get high results in the tests. So we, we don't share that idea because we think that the outcome in education, it doesn't, it doesn't only, it's not only the consequence of a teacher, it's a, more like a neighborhood and many other things. What is the local characteristics of the, of the people living in the side of the school? I mentioned that I will shortly introduce how we are educating teachers now in order to support your understanding how we make progress. So I will tell something about secondary teachers, how they are educated in Finland. They are typically teaching two subjects, teaching grades 7 to 12, student age 13 to 19. So it means middle school, high school in US context. And primary teachers, elementary teachers, class teachers, they are teaching grades one to six and typically all school subjects. So these are the two main type of teachers in our context. And this slide is about master level degree <coughs> of a secondary teacher. And there are the studies, major subject like physics, minor like mathematics and pedagogical studies. So the studies in the subject, they are organized at the faculty of science, faculty of humanities and the pedagogical st studies at faculty of education. The study credits in Europe, I think the most easy way to remember that 60 credits is equal to one year full time studies. So the five year is 300 credits. So the scale is credits in the vertical axis. Major, minor and pedagogical studies. We are dividing them to bachelor and master level. The bachelor level is focusing to the basic studies in the subject. For example, in physics, the mechanics, thermodynamics, electrodynamics, in chemistry, organic, inorganic, metals, analytical chemistry. These kind of things are done in the bachelor level. But there are also some orientation. There are orientation to teach a profession for those students who are orienting. And, and they are also organizing, specializing small courses in the subject. And they are also working with the young people and, and teachers in the in-service training projects and also in the summer camps and, and, and so on. Studies in the master level, they are focusing to the master thesis and pedagogical studies. Inside the pedagogical studies, we have the teaching practice. It's one third. In Finland, it's organized in the teacher training schools. It's a, like a Dewey's idea about the model schools or that kind of schools which are models for other schools. But they are ordinary schools, and, but they are focusing to the supervision of teaching practice. And research orientation is important. Our students in, in secondary teacher education, they make the bachelor thesis, master thesis, and pedagogical thesis. And Finland, we think that this orientation is important for autonomous professionals. This gives them the same feeling than lawyers or medical doctors. They are academic people. They have to make their best, 
high, high, uh, high uh, kind of uh, ethics in the profession, they should have willingness and competence for com co continuous professional learning and, and so on. So this is a nutshell. And the primary teacher education, it's also organized in our university, mainly in our faculty. The major is education or education psychology. Then we have pedagogical content knowledge studies, minor subject studies and communication language studies. The research oriented studies is are inside the major and pedagogical studies also. If you ask Finnish teacher educator, what is the most important characteristics of our teacher education? We get typically an answer that we have this kind of research-based teacher education. And what it mean? It means that the teacher educators, it doesn't matter are they teaching primary or secondary, they are working in kind of research community. For example, I'm working in science and technology we call it STEM research co community. We are making research. This kind of international collaboration is important, publishing our research outcomes. It is not necessarily the same in all European countries. There are many teacher education programs are organized in polytechnics or applied universities where the teachers who are teaching, student teachers, they are themselves not making any research. So it's just teaching. So that's in European scale, that is important topic to discuss. Programs are based on research. Students, teachers have to learn to produce and consume research. National teacher education strategies are based on research on teachers and teacher education. And teacher professionalis professionalism, what I mentioned, the research orientation is one essential part. So that was the kind of current situation. And, and because I have enough time, so is there any questions about the Finnish context or how we are educating teachers now? Because next I will shortly analyze the discussion why we were decided to make progress. So it looks quite nice, but anyway, it's always important to have progress in the activities you are having. And then I go to the main topic. Any questions about the context or please? So and we masters is something that people can but it seems like it might yeah. be different here. So they are practitioners in, in a way, but they are also having the research orientation. And in our context we think that is important because they are not only teaching in a classroom. Okay, every country they are collaborating and making progress and, and but they are also responsible for making the local curriculum. We have a national framework curriculum, a frame, and the local curriculum is important. So they have, had, have to have that kind of competence to make a broad planning. So, and we think that this orientation is giving them the kind of good readiness for, for broad planning. So they have the both phases. I'm not sure it's, it's difficult to communicate because the context is different, but, but this is a long tradition and everybody understand teachers as academic people. And that was, that was decided in 60s, and it was actually decided in Sweden. And Finland has always taken some models from Sweden. But in Sweden, they had stronger universities that time. They don't participate in the Second World War, and they were able to develop. They were participating in the war and losing the war against the Russian. But anyway, we were in a bad situation, and we, we followed the Swedish model that we should educate teachers well in a bad situation suffering from the war and having nothing, only the people. Sweden was not able to implement that idea. Even the societies are somehow similar, neighbor countries. Because the strong universities were saying that teacher profession is not an academic profession. It is more like a vocation, vocational people. But in our context, we think that it's so important to have highly educated teachers. And that's why the universities not my university, but others uh, accept the idea that we should take teachers inside the university studies to master level programs. 
So that was in a very bad situation that was decided and then we made good progress in education after that during the 40 year period. So I hope that it's an important question but not so easy to answer. Yes, please. <coughs> a follow-up on that one. The, um, what are you doing in Finland in terms of the induction years? So for us in yeah. the U.S., yeah. right after you finished either yeah. with a master's, yeah. right, there's um, a very sharp entry into the field where you yeah. kind of have a full load, and we lose a lot of teachers in those first years. Yeah. yeah, I have heard that in, in U.S. The, it's a serious problem that almost 50% of the teachers leave the job after the first year. So, but in Finland, it's common that when you are graduating from the program, you are staying as a teacher. So the induction phase is one, and the mentoring processes. But maybe the most important is the selection. So teacher education ha has good phases. It is equal to other academic fields. And in my university is one of the most challenging even more challenging some years than medical school. So it is very attractive because of the status and the work of the teachers. Light, no control and, and highly appreciated status. So we are able to select 10% of the applicants. So they are good, highly, high st the most, most talented students in our university. So they have the passion to teach. So we are interviewing the candidates. So, so we are using time for selection to teach education. And that is somehow guaranteeing that the teachers are staying in the job. But also the mentoring processes are important. And this is something that in many European countries we are maybe in the beginning of the mentoring processes. We, our university have educated mentors to the metropolitan area. All schools should have a mentor who is taking care of the young teachers. So, but, but that is not the main reason why these teachers are continuing. Of course there are more immigrants, more challenging classes, more, multi, more, more kind of uh, inclusive classes and teacher work is coming more challenging and the resources are somehow cut and, and it's, it is, it is uh, there are some uh, signs that more teachers are nowadays leaving the job. But it's not a serious problem. But there are signs and we have to think about that and how to make the positive progress in teacher profession continuing. And is that selection process um, at the entry to the university or is it later in the, in the it's, it's, it's a combination of, of high school. We, we, we don't have testing, but in the end of high school there is a matricular examination. Like in Germany they have the Abitur, or many European countries have that. It's quite friendly, students decide themselves what test they are taking. It's partly that, and partly interviews, partly entrance examination, or combination of them. It's, it takes a long time to explain, but, but it is partly based on the high school, partly e entrance, partly interviews, and so on. Yeah. When we were starting the last curriculum reform in 2003, in, in middle school and, and primary school, and, and 2000, uh, actually the la latest high school curriculum was, was is, it is not end, it is still going on, but it's almost in the end. Uh, and at the same time, we were discussing about also progress in teach education. What kind of progress we should make in our, my country in teach education. We were somehow analyzing the challenges in different committees and different meetings. And there is quite consensus. What are the most serious challenges in our education sector? Active learning processes and learning outcomes. So the engagement, what is the focus in bio project. Classroom level, the heterogeneous classes, multicultural classes, the inclusive education. It's challenging for teachers. Although there are special need teachers who are supporting and participating in the classes, it's still a challenge. 
learning of generic knowledge, generic competencies or 21st century competencies. They are the classroom level challenges. Quality, I, I emphasize that the quality processes are in, in classroom and school level, but how to organize them in a proper way, how to make progress, how to make quality public. Leadership, learning environments, digital tools, and society level, the artificial intelligence is coming, it is changing the world, the professions, occupations, also the dropout is problem. In most Many European countries, there are almost 20% of the young people who are dropping out from education and labor market. In Finland, we have made it smaller, but it's still too high. Almost 20%, it's, it's too high. So they are the challenges. And then it was also discussed, this kind of questions. Okay, the challenges and then what kind of competencies are needed. What kind of practices at school are producing these competencies. How challenges will be solved in municipal school and classroom level. And what kind of teachers we need. Now, now we come to the teacher education. Because it was recognized the challenges in, in student level, classroom level, school level. So what kind of teachers we should have in our schools in order to overcome the challenges and how we can support teachers in, and teach educators to adopt the new ideas, what we should emphasize. I, this is normal life in Finland, in the US, you go to the supermarket, collect the things and pay yourself. There are also cars now driving without a driver, not, not in everyday situation, but it's, it's coming. So a so lot of jobs are not anymore needed. So it's, it's quite clear that half of the current jobs doesn't exist in 2004. Or if they exist, they get new characteristics. Or totally new jobs are coming. We don't even know what kind of occupations we need. So this was the heavy discussion in the curriculum and teacher education reform program meetings, what we should emphasize. O of course, there are answers in international <laughs> literature and, and UNESCO has been very active in describing the competencies we need in future. OECD and, and European Union, they have been active in publishing the description of the competencies that are needed by adults. Of course, the challenge is, is that the description is for adults and at school we have young people who are not adults. So, so how, to, how to emphasize things at school? But anyway, it was important to become familiar with those ideas in different organizations, publications. And, and they have variation in opinions and different connotations. So it's quite interesting to look at those papers and and for example, the UNESCO is more looking, okay, sustainable development is important in UNESCO papers and, and good life for humans. So it's a very personal and, and society and this kind of centered and, and sustainability is important. OECD is more looking, economic growth is important, but also the societies and individuals should have a nice life. I think the European Union maybe might have the most kind of heavy <laughs> orientation, the labor market and employment. But the employment is important because we have that problem in Europe, in many countries that there's a, too many young people are dropping out from the education and labor market. I think we were mainly following the, the SECO ideas and of course the union ideas. The SECO is the kind of recognition of the key competencies. That was the idea in that project. And the DESECO was describing that what kind of thinking, what kind of working, what kind of tools we need for working, and what kind of context are where we are working. In the original DESECO, there was not emphasis on the attitudes. And, 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 but in Finnish discussion, we emphasize the attitudes. And the latest OECD uh, description of the competencies, I, I think Barbara is now collaborating with, uh, who, who is the person in OECD? Uh, Stefan. 
Stefan and, and Katarina also, you have a strong collaboration. And I like personally this new OECD thinking better than the, for example, the DSECO, because the DSECO was not emphasizing the attitudes. So know how, know what are important, the basic competencies. And then also this behavioral and social competencies, willingness to engage, self-confidence, that kind of things. And, and finally also the creative and critical thinking skills. So it's more holistically looking the competencies in my understanding. And, and even the DSECO was not emphasizing those attitudes. I think they were taking seriously in our, our thinking while we were making the teacher education development program and, and, and also the curriculum. Maybe I, I this is also Stefan's ideas. And, and I think this very nice idea in this OECD rubrics, how, how, the, how we should emphasize the creative and critical thinking in all kind of uh, situations where we are. We have been focusing to the scientific practices in bio project or inquiry orientation. So you need both creative and critical thinking in inquiry, design of the study is more creative, identifying good questions and making connection to claim and evidence is more critical type of thinking needed. And in our peer data, I think we have, Katarina, maybe you, you should listen now. So we have an evidence that this student feeling that they are more creative in science lessons. That comes very clear in the PIRE ASM data. So the inquiry, we need both type of thinking. Or in designing, of course the designing as such is creative, but taking into account several views and evaluation of ideas, it's critical. In teaching, in our context, it's important that teachers are creating a meaningful process and product which is quite often they are looking for novel ideas in, in, in teaching. But also the ana it's, it's a creative type, but analyzing the strengths and the limitations is more critical. And, and so on. In every, every human actions you can see the both. And that's a, a, a nice idea in this OECD rubric. And science, I, I think Barbara somehow emphasized that we have the same ideas in Finland and United States in science education now. You have the next generation science standards. We have our science curriculum. Our curriculum is not so heavy package than your standards, but the orientation is very similar. Body of knowledge, you call it disciplinary core ideas. The kind of basic concept, co concepts and models are important. And we reduce a lot of load in our science curriculum. Process and methods are important. And they are not, as, as Joe is always emphasized, they are not separate, they are working together. And then the cross-cutting concepts as a third view. In science, there is no science within inquiry and critical thinking. There's no technology without design and creative thinking. And as I mentioned that in both processes, inquiry we need critical and creative, and in design we need creative and critical. So <laughs> one slide about new science education curriculum in Finland, but I think that's, that's enough to, to demonstrate that at least that is somehow following the ideas of the generic competencies and 21st century learning. Use of knowledge. And now, I come to the main topic, this was introduction. How we make progress in teacher education. We had a government 2015-18, and it's a common that governments have programs. But this government had a strategic program. It was very short document, and I think it's quite well demonstrating the Finnish thinking that in each strategic level, the documents are short, and then the implementation are somehow given to the bigger, bigger number of people. And the ministry nominates a forum for making progress in teacher education. About 70 experts were nominated to the forum. And, and in the very beginning, in the negotiation with the ministry, we decided that we make a literature review about teachers and teacher education. We benchmark some neighbor countries. We organize a national brainstorming. 
and then we collaboratively start to build up a new idea what is important in teacher education. And implementation was also part of the agreement with the ministry. And I have been happy to lead this, this national project to make a new strategy for teach education. I, I think in most countries we have a national framework or strategy for teach education. And there are maybe two main reasons for, for that kind of things. So first, it's kind of common understanding what kind of teachers we need in our, our society. Kind of big ideas. And second, quite often also, it's used for evaluation. Evaluation of teachers who are graduating from the teacher education program. There's a national accreditation or evaluation. But in our context, it's only the kind of national understanding what is the orientation in teacher education, not the control in this, this sense. There is a large body of research literature in, in, in this how to make national strategies, how to make national programs. I, I think that it's emphasized in many, many papers, the consensus type of thinking. It's not possible to make a national guideline which is very one-sided. The consensus is important. Stakeholders, city people, labor union people, employee union people, students, teacher educators. And, and, it, 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 and this has happened in Finland in, in national curriculum work and also in national teacher education strategy work. And the negotiations and discussions are somehow driving the discussions to the same direction. And the, while we are making the strategy, we should al always think also the implementation. And the implementation is almost the same than professional learning. So in the case of teacher education strategy, the implementation is about teacher educators professional learning. So we should think about how to support teacher educators, the professors at university, their professional learning. Of, of course, it's important to participate them to the strategy work, but there are many other things we should take into account. And in the professional learning of teachers and teacher educators, goal orientation, collaboration, networking, contextualization, reflection, research orientation, they are important characteristics. And then we need communication channels. We need meetings, we need pilot projects organized in the domain of, of the strategy. And this is what OECD, Finland, US, we are the members of the OECD. What is our organization telling to us? What is important in national level strategy work? Timing. So if we have four year period, there should be kind of strategic decision made in the very beginning because there should be time for implementation. It's too often the strategy is ready when the government is used the four year time. So careful timing, time for implementation, consensus, the OECD recommend consensus, stakeholders and teacher unions, they are important. Resources, in the scale of Finland, it, it was about 30 million euro were allocated for pilot projects. In, in our uh, state budget, it's quite big money, 30 million euro. We have eight universities, so it's a big, small country, eight universities. Piloting and, and dissemination. So this is what the OECD recommend us. Literature review was of course important. We are scholars, we are interested about research. And, and a lot of outcomes is coming from the literature review. A good teacher, a good teacher have an impact to students' engagement and learning. Coherence, it's the one area of research on teacher education. How the teacher educators at the Faculty of Science, Faculty of Education, 
how they understand the big idea in teach education, how they organize their own courses according to big idea, how they are linked, how coherent is teach education, what is the coherence between field experience and courses, do the mentor teachers, do they know what's happening at the university and vice versa, do they have enough communication, of course, the domains of teacher knowledge is important, but also the origins where the knowledge is coming from. And teachers' lifelong professional learning. The, we are not educating teachers for next, next five years, we are educating teachers for the whole career. So what kind of competencies are needed for continuous lifelong learning? I'm not the right person to explain you what are the domains, but uh, the Sulman's model is still uh, the, some other colleagues here in US, how they have developed the ideas. It's important to know these kind of classical models. It's not maybe best for the current situation. It was designed in 80s, late 80s. For example, what is the role of community knowledge? What is the teacher's role in local communities, how they are collaborating, how they are doing things together. Sulman is not mentioning research knowledge. Do teachers need research knowledge? So something it's good to apply, adopt, but I think there's something missing. Actually I asked once from Sulman that why you didn't take the research type of knowledge. So he said that it's, it was long time ago and it was important to have the pedagogical content knowledge to the model. That was missing. In our university we have also the education psychology orientation in teach education. The education psychology people are, they are talking a little bit different way than I, I think I'm following the Sulman's idea better. Um, support the pedagogy is important, interaction is important, feedback, monitoring, support to the affective dimension and also challenges in, in fire project. The engagement is there are preconditions, the challenges are important and psychologists are emphasizing that. So I'm very happy, I'm quite familiar with both ideas and I can take strong sides from those ideas. So these are examples of the literature review outcomes. And, and of course the origins of teacher knowledge is that what is the knowledge coming from practice, do this idea about experience, feedback, reflective practice, what we are following mostly, and the academic books, lectures, research, informal situations. I think that in our university we are somehow aiming to create inside formal teaching and learning informal situations. Because we know their strength in informal situations, how the people are discussing and negotiating and about the topics they are learning, combination. This is an example from the Department of Mathematics in our university. They are responsible for student teachers learning the basic mathematics. Algebra, linear algebra, topology. And this is how it looks quite often. Teachers are having those yellow clothes. Students are active in learning. They are active in constructing mathematical knowledge. I think this is quite a close to the project-based learning, what they are doing in math. They are doing, they are following the mathematics knowledge practices. They are working around artifacts they are collaborating. So we, we try to figure out it like this, that we are aiming to engage students in, in, in our teach education, learning through changing the practices, putting students' ideas to the center, following the knowledge practices, social interaction and artifacts. And the scaffolding, you see the yellow guys there, they are scaffolding the processes. Project-based learning, phenomenal. Some of the colleagues are emphasizing so what phenomenal learning or inquiry education. But, so it's nice to make a literature review 
it's important to become familiar what the research is telling us about teachers and teacher education, student teachers learning, different views. The people who, are, who have wrote those papers, who have organized the projects, what is the understanding of learning, how they understand teacher professionalism, are they more looking for effective teachers or professional teachers? How they understand, how we understand professional learning, how we understand school as learning communities, how education policy is done. So, so many contextual factors and, and things that depend from the local side. That how to apply those wonderful ideas coming from, from research to your teacher education program. I think it's not so straightforward. You have to be very careful when you are reading what are the people thinking and what they are emphasizing and how it is working in our context. So it's really challenging to put the ideas. And that's why it's, it's not possible to make kind of national level program only based on research outcomes. They are important research outcomes, but there are many other things we have to focus. For example, it's, it's useful to have a look what's going on in neighbor countries. Sweden. I mentioned that Sweden decided at the same time that they should organize teacher education at traditional universities, but they didn't succeed in that. They are now changing. And you can see that research orientation is coming heavily to Swedish teacher education activities inside the current research and development work. And these student teachers have to make also theses, research theses, not only development projects. Professional knowledge, I emphasized professional practices. In Sweden, I mentioned that in Finland we have 20% of the students are recognized to have special needs. In Sweden, it's, it's higher. They have more multicultural classes, the students are not able to speak Swedish, they have more challenges in Sweden. So they create conditions which are all peoples can learn and develop. Teacher engagement, so they, I emphasized already that we are not preparing teachers to the next year, but for the next 35, 40 years, how long people are working, I don't know. They should be willing and competent for, for lifelong learning. So that was Sweden. In Sweden there are two topics new, the resource orientation and this kind of willingness and competence for collaborating and making progress at the school site. In Norway, almost the same. The professional knowledge is important, resource orientation was coming as a new topic, and this kind of professional practices are emphasized, and engagement for professional learning and also the learning of the school side. So that was clear that in all our Nordic region, similar topics was discussed at the same time. In order to know what the teachers, student teachers, teacher educators in a broad scale are thinking about teachers and teacher education, we organized a national brainstorming. And in this, this kind of brainstorming are quite common now in Finland. We are organizing them in, in many fields, for example, in, in health education, in uh, physical, in, in kind of um, sport activities, and, 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 and almost all domains we are listening people, and organizing a national brainstorming is quite common. And there are nice tools you can run in the internet where you are able to generate ideas, you are guided to generate ideas and give, also give arguments for your ideas. And then later on you are also guided to evaluate ideas, other people, and make rankings of the ideas. So creative processes in the strategy work. A lot of mails were sent to different group of people, including teacher union people. They were first asked to generate ideas, and then they were asked to rank the ideas. And in the system we were using, there was a lot of artificial intelligence inside. So the system was able to combine ideas a little bit. 
also human power was needed. But similar ideas were combined for the rankings. So this process was happening during the four weeks, three weeks, and then outcome, there are many outcomes. This is one outcome, what is important in the development of teacher education. So not only research, not only benchmarking, but this kind of public opinion. So the big, so the scale, it's from zero to 100. So these all are important outcomes. Learning to learn skills are most important from the point of Finnish people. What is important in, in teacher education? Student teachers should learn to learn new things. Interaction and collaboration. And then many, many things. Literacy, equality, use of knowledge. They are quite much emphasized in new curriculum. They were also coming out something that was not emphasized in, in, in neighbor countries, not so much emphasized in research. For example, the teacher's role in solving problems at the classroom and school level. The teachers better in generating ideas. That was quite novel and maybe we were not thinking about that. That that's important competence teachers have to develop in teacher education and in teacher profession. <laughs> it's quite challenging to teach that, but maybe if we allow them to learn, it's, it's possible. And then we come to the national teacher education strategy. And in Finland, we have this tradition that we are aiming to give a very short picture what is important in one slide. So not the 100 page. Teachers' competence in our teacher education, we hope, are focusing to broad and solid knowledge base, expertise in generating novel ideas, and competence for development of own expertise and school. So, and this is not for initial teacher education, it is for pre-service, induction phase, and continuous lifelong learning. So it's covering the whole teacher education, from the selection to the retirement. And, and, and there are some examples in, in the knowledge base. Maybe this knowledge base is more than half, so it's, it's, a, it's, it's not giving right this model, but it's, it's important, the subject knowledge and PCK, general pedagogical knowledge. Learn, knowledge about learning engagement and diversities, collaboration and interaction, research skills, ethics is important in teacher. So they are the basic competencies, knowledge base. Curriculum knowledge, design and adaptation of educational innovations, they are, which belongs to the expertise in generating novel ideas. And then competence and willingness for personal development and development of the school. When I compare this Finnish uh, strategy, out, strategy work outcome, for example, the United Kingdom. There is a lot of aims, this is in nutshell. In United Kingdom, the most of the strategic aims, they are focusing to the professional knowledge and practices inside the classroom. And there is one actually quite broad area which is focusing to the professional learning, teachers' engagement in professional learning. So it's important afterwards to have a look for other countries again and compare. In Australia, professional knowledge, professional practices, and professional engagement in professional learning. They are the three domains. So this creative, innovative orientation is missing. In addition to these strategic aims, we recognize in this collaborative process six actions, and then this 30 million was allocated for making progress in this six action. Better holistic view, selection, better selection, even we are quite happy with the selection, supporting to the development of competence needed in generating novel ideas, collaboration culture, supportive leadership, 
and, and research-based each education. So the money was allocated for those six areas. Uh, one year was used for making the strategy and three year has been used for making progress. And now the government decided that we will continue three year. So this, was post, this time was given more for the implementation. We are emphasizing collaboration inside the universities, collaboration between the initial and, and professional development programs, research orientation. So when we make the call for proposals, we, we emphasize in the call these aspects and those six actions. So that was the way how in a country where we have autonomy in teacher level, classroom level, school level, municipality level, it's possible to make progress in the national strategies or implementation of the strategies. First, to participate people, but then also the money resources are guiding people. And this is the way how we guide university professors for professional learning, implementing the ideas in the strategy to the practices through the support money. And of course, the local meetings are needed, national level meetings and local meetings, where the ideas are shared and discussed, and research meetings. We don't have centralized quality control. So in Finland, we have a tradition that in every activity, we have kind of internal quality assurance procedures. So I was organizing together with the steering committee kind of monitoring how the project leaders, directors, red color, and how the partners feel, how they are working inside the project. We know that based on the research, the goal orientation, collaboration, contextualization, reflection, they are supportive of professional learning. So we monitor how the directors see, how the partners see these kind of characteristics inside the projects. And then we communicate outcomes to the people in order to support the local reflection. So continuous quality work the project, pilot projects are covering, especially the, this expertise for generating novel ideas and the research orientation in the selection and in the, in the leadership. There were few projects, they were quite large, but they were missing and that's why we open a new call for those areas. Based on this quality, monitoring. It looks that the nice progress is going on. They are orienting to those characteristics of pilot projects that are supportive professional learning. Self-evaluation is telling us that they are achieving the aims. Still a lot of things have to be done. Uh, this is a simple model of what, what might be followed at the universities because every university is responsible for teacher education programs. The research on the domains of teacher knowledge, research on the uh, kind of processes, what's supportive for student teachers learning, university pedagogy research, for example, national strategies, international strategies, European Union, OECD, and in Finland, the feedback, I mentioned this quality work is inside the process. The feedback is important while making the local programs. But we are, we are not able to say in the strategy how the local programs are made and how what is emphasized, but we can share ideas how, how we can make progress. And last slide. Somehow, almost the same as the OECD recommendation for the national level projects, good timing, engaged teachers, stakeholders, teacher union, consensus, resources, research-oriented pilot projects. But what is something new? The quality. So the quality work should be done inside the project. And holistically, 
at the same time curriculum and teach education in order to have interaction between the curriculum and teach education progress. So two additions to the OECD. So that was in nutshell how, how in Finland. I think that the PIA project has made influence to this teach education discussion, especially, especially those processes and creativity and many, many other things have come to the discussion about progress in teach education. So, so thank you for coming here. Thank you for listening. I'm very happy to answer any questions you have. In the winter time, Helsinki looks like that. <laughs> yeah, Barbara. And so does Michigan. Um, anyway, thank yeah. you very much mm. for a great talk. <coughs> I have a um, question for Michigan. Um, you know, I think that I've been thinking hard about. So, in emphasizing um, a research based teacher education program, in uh, encouraging, um, generating creative ideas, novel ideas. Mm. The one part that it seems to me, um, and I don't mean this as a um, missing from, but I think it's missing more generally from the conversation itself, not just from Finland, from all of us, mm. um, is this whole question about teaching the other part of research to teachers, which is, it isn't just generation of ideas, it's being able to judge which ideas are worthwhile, how do you know that they're worthwhile, what are the strategies which you're going to use to figure out if those ideas work, so that, that if we just focus on the ability to raise questions without the second, third, and fourth steps and what it means to create evidence or claims and decide whether those claims are valid mm. or not, that I think we miss an opportunity um, to really press a little bit harder on these notions of critical thinking, developing models, thinking hard. And I don't yeah. think it's just one that applies to science. I think it also applies to literature, yeah. to history, to the rest uh, of the And even teaching. Yeah. Your, your planning processes, your processes in the classroom, your reflection afterwards, yeah. it's influencing everything. And they, I think in this new OECD rubrics, compared to DeSeco, uh, this is one brilliant, there are many brilliant ideas, but this is one brilliant idea is that the creativity and critical way of thinking, they are in all processes we are doing. Yeah, I, I think that that to me seems really yeah. fundamental because if we don't press on the um, strategic way that we do things and the assessment by which we assess whether it's valid yeah. or not, Oh, please. Um, so in the U.S. we have 3.2 million teachers. And so this whole question about professional learning at the, um, of what we're going to do with people that are currently in practice. Yeah. So that the issue for me is, does, has Finland developed a process by which they're going to do continuing professional learning for their existing yeah. teachers? That's, that's very, very important. So, of course, the state is allocating money for teachers' professional learning. Earlier, some 10 years ago, it was mainly allocated to the in-service training institutes. So they were organizing training. Teachers were going from the school to the training and then back, and nothing happens. So now, the money is used more for networking, and also inside the PIA project, we have get funding for organizing teachers' professional learning in a research practice partnership. So the research and practice are in partnership. And in this partnership, I, I think Joe has experienced this with Finnish teachers. It's a kind of win-win situation that we researchers, we benefit, we, we can have nice new experiments and, and we can learn from practice through the teachers' discussions, but the teachers can learn new, new knowledge and competencies. So, so these kind of things are more emphasized now, the teacher networks, and again, researchers are welcome, 
and, and, and also this research practice partnership. And, and in this teacher education forum, money, 30 million, there was also in the call for proposal that there should be collaboration with schools. And what we also made, the National Board of Education, which is funding the teachers in service training, they add also that in a good proposal, there is a clear connection to the university collaboration. So this is the shift now, for, so which is, I think, more supportive for teacher professional learning. But everybody should, and, and this was a consequence of doing the curriculum work and teach education strategy work at the same time. Put these things meet. And the implementation of both are done together. And Kalle was successful in, in making the proposal for teachers professional learning inside the Paya project with Kata. I was not able to apply because I was leading. Yeah, please. Deborah. Could you talk a little bit more in detail about the teacher evaluation, the way that I, I saw yeah. the slide, but I wasn't sure I understood mm. how that actually... How teachers are evaluated in Finland. So, first in, in the... Actually, I have one slide, if I can find it. This one. How, how to put this? Uh, maybe, maybe it's fine here. So the Finnish and opposite trends in teacher evaluation. So in the qualification, the master level degree, it's enough, including pedagogical studies. In many countries, like in South Korea, there are national tests before you get the license. We don't have standards, like Australia has professional standards, and they are using the standards for evaluation. We have a kind of common understanding of national aims, but not heavy evaluation. So assessment of teachers or appraisal is based on Finland, based on teachers' self-assessment and development discussions with principals. So the teachers are preparing themselves to the discussions with the principal. And they negotiate and where they have success, where they have difficulties. In many countries there are external evaluation sheets and many formal evaluation of teachers. No inspectors, in many countries the heavy inspection, no national testing. So it looks loose, it, it looks very... <laughs> Maybe you are saying that we are not having assessment for teachers, but there are mechanisms, and, and we have also so-called monitoring. We have the national monitoring in mother tongue and mathematics based on representative sample of schools, not the old schools. And the monitorings are communicated. What is the outcome of the monitoring? And teachers are eager to learn about these outcomes of the monitoring. There are many mechanisms, but not the similar than many other countries. So do the headmaster or the principals, do they do observations of their teachers? Sometimes, but not, not very frequently. It's, it's a trust culture is important. A trust culture is working if we have this high quality initial teacher education, collaboration culture, and common understanding. And then you have to remember that we have the heavy selection to teach education. So they are good students and good teachers. So I think it's, it's working and it's not clever to change as in many other countries because this makes teacher life very enjoyable. Mm -hmm. They enjoy, they are professionals, they are willing to make progress. Panu is here. He's voluntarily here, he's voluntarily now a project. This is a good example of Finnish teacher. Look at him. <laughs> <laughs> Finnish teacher, Can yeah. I have one comment? Yeah, please. But uh, there are <coughs> We in Finland, uh, we have, uh, for example, 
currently in my school we have three physics teachers and two chemistry teachers and we discuss with each other every day. So how we are going to teach that course or that topic and everybody has a little bit different kind of ideas but when we discuss we sort of evaluate what would be the best way to teach that course or that topic or anything else. And you made evaluations together quite often? Together. Yeah. It's sort of evaluation but it's not evaluation. Yeah, yeah. But, but common tests common and mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah, culture of trust, yeah. Yeah. There were two two hands. You were first and then you and this yeah. yeah. So uh, my question is that if you you kind of uh, you say that this culture of trust is uh, originates in the in just the, like the the filtering process of teachers. Yeah. But uh, is there something else? So the Linda is is it yeah. just might be maybe most important, but is there yeah. something else? Can you elaborate more on what do you see yeah. like what causes this mechanism of trust that is lacking in so many educational systems? So I, I have read some papers of Linda Darling Hammond. She has made some comparisons and Finland has been one of the countries in the comparisons and this Highly educated te teachers is number one, so the master level education. And the, the kind of culture in collaboration, like Pan was describing, and the kind of common understanding about the aims or orientations, where we are going. So Siemens and these three are important, working at the same time. So, so in, in research about professional standards, so some researchers think that teacher profession is so complex that it's so difficult to standardize and test. So that is quite strong opinion by some researchers. And, and so also we can look from the other side, negative side, that it's not clever. You. Yeah. I'm Jack Schwilling <coughs> and I have been an admirer of Finnish education since I went to, started working with Finland in 1972 oh. in IEA. And I want to tell you how gratified I am that you and Barbara have done this work and brought yeah. this to fruition. Yeah. It's, a, it's a wonderful example. So 72. That was the very beginning in master level teacher education. That was a transition from, from grammar school, kind of private and public sector, but put together. That was a transition time when you were in Finland. And in that time, in rankings, Finland was among the lower countries, but then during, it takes 25 years, then we were in the very high in the PISA, a little bit drop down because of the economical crisis and cuts in the education. But you were interesting time in Finland, yeah. just starting. Well, that's when people uh, talk about uh, that we shouldn't be uh, paying so much serious attention to Finland because it's such a homogeneous country. Yeah. I like to point out that the ed educational system back then was not, uh, did not have all these characteristics yeah. and was not so highly ranked. And, uh, correct. It's really developed through the efforts that yeah. you and others have made. Yeah, correct. Anyway, I, uh, since uh, last week was the uh, World Association of Lesson Study meeting in uh, Amsterdam, yeah. our own Lynn Payne was there, um, I'm wondering, I've been an admirer of Japanese lesson study and how it uh, spread throughout the world. I'm wondering to what extent uh, Finland has or has not been influenced yeah. by yeah. this uh, uh, highly developed uh, approach to uh, teacher yeah. learning. So Panu describes in some level that it, it, it would not be called as Japanese lesson study. So we have a lot of to learn from this tradition. It's very powerful tradition. And the, the schools have increased time for teacher collaboration. It is based on the negotiation with the teacher union and employee union. And I think somehow towards that, but we are not expert in that lesson study tradition. In some level, yes, but there is better countries in this field. Israel was raising. 
to me, I just want to go back to what uh, Deborah said. Um, and I find it very remarkable that, that you have been such a huge teacher trust that you are able to have the system. Yeah. To me, looks very, like you said, very loose. Can you talk a little bit about, you said that in order to become a teacher, it's a highly selective process. Yeah. Can you maybe add some numbers to that? So meaning, what is my chance to become a teacher if I go through this master degree? And what, yeah. is, uh, what are you looking for? If I get straight A's in all my physics classes, yeah. does that necessarily yeah. make me a teacher? Yeah. In, in the case of physics teachers and math teachers, I think it's a very good chance because it, it's not everybody is selected, not everybody, but okay, the, uh, there are two phases. The first phase in science and math teacher education is the competence test. It's based on the final examination in high school or entrance examination. You have to be high, good enough in the competence of math and science in order to be accepted. And the second phase is interview and in this second phase, almost everybody is selected because not lack, but, but we need those who are willing to come, science teachers and math teachers. It's very small number is rejected in that. But in a primary teacher education, there, I don't know, the, remember the statistics because we just changed a little bit, but it typically has been some 7,000 applicants. 100 positions. First phase is competence test, measuring the willingness and understanding of learning psychology and, and philosophy of education, this kind of educational competency. And then the interviews. So 5%, 10% is something like that selected in primary teacher education. I, 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 I'm never selected in that program. I think you are not. It's, it's very, you have to be really passionate and you have to have a lot of experiences working with young people. Maybe you have, I'm, I'm not so familiar, but young people and, and good in communication and interaction. And so based on this exceptional selection process, do you experience very low teacher in the US and other countries, there's a very high percentage of teacher burnout. Yeah. The teachers start teaching and within five years, a large percentage of them just say that yeah. this is not for me, this is too much, and they yeah. drop out. Yeah. Do you experience yeah. less of that? Yeah. It's a, it's a pity Kata, Kata left to the meeting because she has been making research on burnout of teachers. Yes, in some level, but I'm not able to say. Very, maybe, Barbara, do you know about teacher burnout well, in I Finland? The, because Kata I, is doing I, I can't give the numbers, but I can say that there is definitely an issue that comes in it, and we can see it in our data as well, yeah. that um, there's a, a high uh, feeling of um, being burnt out, of not enjoying what their mm. work anymore. Um, so yeah. the extent to which they leave, I, I don't know. Um, mm. When you look at what's going on in the U.S., um, it, the numbers are really quite dramatic um, in terms of yeah, how many yeah, people yeah. are willing to leave that are young, mm -hmm. um, and especially the ones that end up through alternative certification programs. So, if I could, yeah. That yeah. Was yeah. Tomorrow we can come back. Yes. So I haven't had a lot of experience, but yeah. some of the experiences I had when I was there are very different than the experience of our teachers, right? So one thing is, yes, there's a high selection. But once they become a teacher, there's high choice. And we know that choice is very motivating. So teachers are uh, in Finland are more independent actors than teachers in the US, right? I think that's another really yeah. important criteria that we have. They, bring, they, they, do, they decide what's my, these are my students. I yeah. have to diagnose what their problems are. Correct. I have to create the curriculum. I just have to meet the state's yeah. the standards, yeah. right? That's very different in the United States where we give them a pacing chart and someone walks into my classroom and says, are you there today? They don't have that, right? So to me, these are all factors that create this uh, professionalism, mm. right? So it's not just selection. It's once they get there that uh, 
they, they make independent choices. Mm. And I think that, well, you know, we can ask our teacher that's here, but I, I think those independent choices make a big difference. Yeah. I think Panu described also that they are willing to negotiate, but they make the decision. Yeah. Yeah. They, they are responsible for the students and parents. And this is also quite interesting. If you, if in the PISA data, there is a question that how much, a teacher questioner, how much you feel pressure from the parent side. Constant pressure. In Finland, it's about 3% of the teachers feel constant pressure. In US, 50-60%. In Singapore, 80%. Who teachers who feel constant pressure from the parent side. So it's very low in Finland. Yeah. that I look at and I see very differently from my one is that getting back to this issue of trust, the first is that there is at least among um, Finnish teachers a sense of and this isn't not to say that there it's not true in the United States, but there is the idea that they're there to for the welfare of the mm. of the students. Yeah. So that's their first objective, and that, that really builds a different kind of yeah. trust level. Yeah. So if you look at highly, you could be a highly educated teacher, but if you don't put the welfare of the student as your first priority, and that's a common vision in the culture of collaboration, yeah. Yeah. that kind of undermines that yeah. whole yeah. issue of working together because you share that vision. I'm here to really have our kids learn. They, and, the, and by the way, isn't there also the, the, to keep moving the target that we just talked about parents, parents, their trust that the teachers have, the kids, that. and mm. the best job. Yeah. Parents in the United States don't always believe that teachers have that as their. And I also think, well, it, I think it also has some other kinds of implications, because one is, is our system has become so, in the U.S. has become so more complex, and competitive, parents are, and when we look at what that means, parents go into a classroom and all they really look, are looking mm. at is how is that teacher treating my student? Are they taking care of my child? And that has really kind of changed the nature of what parents are looking mm. for. When mm. they, they don't come to see an expert teacher. They come to make sure that their, their own child is being yeah. treated fairly and being pushed Levels. Yeah. I think that's one big difference. I think another difference is that because the situation has become so complex that the kind of general education that you're required to do at home to help your children is not well known um, among all parents in the US. So the consequence of that is that in this culture that we've created about schooling, some parents have it and some people don't want it, so the haves and the have nots even exacerbates the situation even more. Then we have issues of social justice, race, and class, mm. and sustaining poverty, and not and the resource issues are very real. Mm. And it used to be that the idea was, well, we can't put any more money in schools, but the reality is that right now our schools are very unequally resourced. It probably in a time mm. where they've never been so unequally yeah. resourced. Um, yeah. And that all of the gentrification, the development, the uh, everything that's gone on to improve our low um, uh, resource schools has done little to improve that. And yeah. we are probably at the widest gap we've ever been yeah. in, in terms of schools yeah. that are well resourced in one place. Yeah. You, you, you have a different model for funding. It's based on the neighborhood, how the money in that area and in our, our country, we, we use the term positive discrimination. The positive discrimination means that those who have more difficulties, they get more di resources. So that is transform of the resources from the rich area to the low income area. So that, that is accepted. So the conservative party accept, they think it's a good, because small country, we only have people we need to educate all well. So that's shared, the idea. Maybe somebody says it's like a communist idea, but, but it's 
still uh, in education, it's a working idea. It's a moral imperative. Moral, yeah. Well, I, yeah. I, I don't know if I call it a communist one, no. but they definitely yeah. call but it. But I have heard, uh, <laughs> heard about <laughs> some people think it's like that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yo, please. I'm sure. The, so um, I always used to joke with people in the United States that, you know, being an old school board member and, yeah, and yeah. Board, at that level, that the mission of public education in the United States is legal compliance. If you were to take a stopwatch and watch mm. s local school boards talk and, and the mm. amount of things they spend yeah. time on, it's mostly how do they comply with the most recent state mandate. If you talk to teachers, right, a lot of their time is spent yeah. talking about how do they comply with the most recent state mandates. So yeah. We have a tendency in the United States to impose more and more mandates on schools and teachers. My question is, yeah. how do you in Finland stop, or what's the nature of the culture that prevents political pushing of mandates down into the schools in that same way? Mm. This, uh, we, we have a so-called kind of, in, in medical science, it's a hip Hippocrat, uh, what is that? Uh, first um, do no harm? Uh, yeah, yeah, but in, we have this kind of Comenius agreement, and, and this kind of, the teachers are, very aware that the political ideas are not, uh, they are discussed, of course, the political parties and politics and they are important topics, but, but nobody is a part of a, a teacher identity, teacher ethics, it's, it's, nobody is offering or, or emphasizing any political ideology. Um, that's my understanding. <laughs> And officially, it's it's like that. So, but but I don't know. Maybe, maybe in some level could happen. But but I think it's a kind of social control is preventing that kind of and uh, the ethics of the teachers. Yeah, I think mine is reversed. Yeah. How do you keep the politicians from interfering with the teachers? This is a culture thing. Very different culture. Yeah, so cult cultural. Yeah, I, I it's. In, in a foreign country, I met often questions that it's very difficult to interpret in my context. And I think it, it's, it's relevant here, maybe, but it's, it's so difficult to find a kind of common angle in our, <laughs> our system that it's, I'm not, I've not think about. I, I remember the first time I was giving talk in US and the first question that, that if you have a bad teacher, how you can kick him out. That was the first question. I have never heard about that. <laughs> so so it, it was so strange question. <laughs> Difficult to think about the situation. Okay, there are mechanisms. There are negotiations, those negotiations, and there are mechanisms that they made agreements and, and it is followed. And in the bad situation, yes, you can lose your job, but it's not common. But now we go far away from your question, but it's, it's very difficult to answer by my side. Because I have never heard about that. Have you, Kalle, heard? Mm -hmm. There have been some, some negotiations concerning some uh, very uh, real, uh, religious part of that. Oh yeah, that's... That kind of things. How to, how to handle these issues at school? And, and one, one, I think it's one, one is in the teacher education and one is in the, in the curriculum. It is said explicitly that teaching is research and, and science foundations. The content in the school is, is research based content and it is science content. And teachers are experts in physics, biology, chemistry, literature, history, and they have master degree in this these subjects. And it's very difficult to come to say to the teacher that now you perhaps you should teach this topic yeah. because it is politically uh, relevant or interesting. And on teacher, okay, interesting point, but this is not part of biology. This is not biology according to curriculum, yeah. And, and in, in biology we have this kind of concept, this kind of theories and models that we teach at school. And that, that's perhaps the but we have very we have, have had very little that kind of uh, discussion yeah. in Finland, and I'm very interesting to see what happens because it, 
will increase in the near future, I'm sure. Because mm. of the, I uh, think it would, would be interesting to compare uh, uh, Sweden and Finland with respect to the politics of education and how the influence of, of ideas uh, in terms of uh, being imposed on schools. Uh, the reason I think that is that, uh, uh, as you said, there's still no private education in, no. in uh, Finland. But, uh, and Sweden used to have this very egalitarian, I mean, not so long ago, a very yeah. egalitarian system with very little private yeah. education and very little, and the between school variance and school and outcome scores were, were very low compared to other yeah. countries. And then all of a sudden, this government, which wasn't actually, I think, conservative, was democratic yeah. government, uh, maybe, yeah, yeah, privatization in a big way yeah. in all sorts of areas, yeah. and created this situation where you now have private schools, you have a bunch of yeah. more inegalitarian yeah. Yeah. results in terms of outcomes. But but there's a difference between U.S. private, so so it's not legal to collect money. So the money in private education is also coming from the government. Okay. That's yes, that's the difference. For profit companies. That's the difference. Sorry? They are for profit. For profit, yeah, yeah. Schools. Like in Sweden. And in Finland we have also private schools, but they are not allowed to be for profit. Yeah. So so they call them they have a kind of board, school board, that is making them private. Uh, the Swedish system is, is very, uh, how would I call it, catastrophic. <laughs> 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 how did this happen? I mean, why did something like this happen? It's a good question. Yeah, I think. Uh, this discussion is very interesting yeah. in terms of uh, why there hasn't been this kind of, uh, what I call negative political influence. I think the question in Sweden is only, only speculation, but some, they are, in the U.S., there is a profit prisons. There have to be, you have to be allowed to organize the service if you can do that better and, and the public administrative organization. Yeah. So that was the thinking in Sweden. That have to, have, you have to have freedom to organize service. Yeah, and ours was freedom of expression Although the charter school movement and some of these other movements that went into for-profit, um, they, they started doing mm -hmm. these for-profit schools too. Um, but that quickly, that didn't work terribly well. It's still and, out there. Uh, they're fine. still out there, but they're not. They, they certainly had nowhere near the amount of resources that were being put into them. Like, um, you know, maybe years ago. Um, now they support charter public education and other types of um, maybe private schools by giving donations, but they're not operating them for profit. Mm. And I, I think that there was something that just didn't fit right with the culture of education in the U.S. that really changed that. I, I don't know. I'd be interested to hear what other people They kept the same model, Barbara. Mm. Right? So if we, I'm, I'm going to, I'll raise this issue again. So one is, if, again, I'd love, you should speak up and if the fin, all our Finnish colleagues should finish up. But one of the things I notice when I go to Finland is teachers actually have time to think about their teaching. They're expected to do that. We in the United States, if it's a either public school or non-public school, we don't give time to think. Mm. We have five classes. 30 kids in a class or 25 kids in a class. There's no time to, th it's not a profession. It's like a, it's like a, it, it's, it, it's our assembly line model. Mm. We, continue, we continue this assembly line model, right? Where in Finland, I really do see it as a teacher has time to think about how am I gonna present this subject matter to mm -hmm. those children in front of me? 
it, th to me, that's a, obviously I'm presenting to wide ends, but that, that seems that idea of presenting these, you know, I'm, I have to figure out how to do this for these kids is a very different approach than I have all these kids in front of me and I'm just going to present this information because I have to follow this pacing chart. Mm -hmm. To me, that makes such a tremendous difference. Yeah. But the, we didn't break that model at all mm -hmm. in the, the for profits. Mm -hmm. for profits. It was the, the same model, mm -hmm. right? It was, it was an assembly line, let's get these kids through this. Mm -hmm. We just did not break that model. But you have this district level testing is guiding more than the teacher professionalism. Yeah, that's, yeah, that's the point. The testing model. Testing model. Mm -hmm. Of course, the testing might be also good, but, but it's m too much driving everything. So that's the point. So Joe has been discussing with Finnish teachers. I think that is based on the discussions with the teachers, how they really feel the situation. Yeah, it's, it's up to them. Their classroom is where they make decisions. Yeah. How they put, you know, again, I, I can't speak Finnish, or can't, yeah. I wish I could, so I don't really understand all the con what's going on, but to me it seems like a teacher has more, more choice. Mm. And they Absolute have opportunities choices. to do that, right? Like in the United States, a teacher gets a free hour and they go to the teacher's lounge and I don't know what they do, right? But in Finland, <laughs> I, I, get this, I get this sense, well actually I know they do well with a teacher, but, <laughs> Uh, in Finland, they get more. They get more opportunities. Like I'm a professional, I have to figure this out. Yeah, that's that, good observation. Really broad yeah, yeah, yeah. You have to tell me if I'm okay. wrong. Okay, okay. I think there's quite time is running out, so Barbara is well, so be close now. Yes. No. Well, we will, I, you've been standing up here no. for quite no. an hour and forty-five minutes, so I think that that's. Um, but now I'm sure you understand why I consider Yari to be, one, an expert um, beyond reproach, and second of all, a, just a lovely human being. And he has been really a joy to collaborate with, and I would also like to say our project, um, Jack is um, Yari and Katerina and Joe and myself, so there are really mm. four of us that <laughs> forge this um, very, different way of thinking about undertaking um, collaborative research in um, two different countries. So we're very fortunate to have still remaining very close and dear friends and visiting mm. each other in different places. So I would well, like to- it, it's fabulous. Mm. Oh, well, thank you very much. Well, I'd like to say thank you to you all yeah. for being such a great audience. And don't forget, tomorrow <laughs> is the big day. Yeah, big day. <laughs> We will see you all where we will give you all of the wonderful things that we have found through our fabulous um, great treatment, which we are very excited about, and what we have been able to accomplish as a collaborative group. So to you, I say thank you, and to you, I say thank, thank you. you, and thank you. Thank you.